The Karate Kid opened in theaters in 1984 and inspired a generation of youth to join the martial arts. Now more than 30 years later, lightning strikes again with the Cobra Kai series, taking the saga into deeper, funnier, and honestly, more insightful directions. Now while the story and characters may be based on fiction, there are some cast members who train in the martial arts in real life, and that's what we're here to talk about today. Today we have special guest Owen Morgan, who plays Bert on the hit show. Now, while Bert does often play a role in the comic relief, it's interesting to know that in real life, he's one of the few cast members that actually holds a black belt and has been training his whole life. Today, he's here with us to talk about what it's like being a real karate kid and playing one on TV. So welcome Owen to the show. Um, we really appreciate you being on the show with us today to talk about your experience in the martial arts. Uh, I guess the first question to start off with is how did you actually get involved in the martial arts and how old were you? Let's see. Um, it's been over 10 years since I first got into karate. Um, I started as a little kid. I just, I don't remember exactly why I wanted to. I probably had some friends doing it at the time. Um, but I mean, yeah, I've just been, I've been doing karate for a, a very, very long time. Just as long as I can really remember. Now, can you tell us a little bit about your school? Now, it's actually your family that runs the school. Is this correct? Yes. And it's all, yes, it All-Star is. Karate? All-Star Karate, yes. About 30 minutes outside of Atlanta, yeah. It's a big, like, um, kind of fusion martial arts thing where we uh, put a bunch of different uh, kind of karate styles together. So um, it's mostly karate and taekwondo. But we take from a little bit of everything, take the best parts out of uh, all the different styles and kind of discard what we don't need. And uh, yeah, it's just, that's that's our that's our thing. That's what we do. I like that you mentioned that it's a fusion because I was looking at your family's website and it's, it's interesting because there's a lot of schools that say, you know, we teach this program, we teach this program, but I'm mm -hmm. very intrigued with fusion programs where you take specific elements and you make a curriculum out of it. Now yeah. in your school, is it one general curriculum or is it broken down into different categories? Generally, it's all it's all one curriculum. Um, we just kind of, yeah, it's it's all just one big thing. It's not usually uh, if there is a good separation. I don't know. <laughs> it's not something that um, is really made a big point out of. It's just something where it's like you get taught a certain curriculum, and it just it gets more advanced as you go along because um, it's just a little bit of everything. Now that I like, because this is you're kind of in a unique position because a lot of people that we have on the show and a lot of people who watch our show, they come from, you know, their background is this particular martial art they may spend 10, 20 years in, then they cross train and they see a big contrast between arts. I like the fact that you're starting off in a mixture. So it's kind of unique that you're not really seeing that separation at the beginning. So what does that mean in terms to you when you hear people talk about which style is better or do you have a preference of what you like in training versus other parts of training? I kind of like the fact that you're kind of starting or you started off as, as a clean slate without those political lines drawn. What mm -hmm. is your favorite part of training and what is your message to people who try to say that one art is better than another? Well, yeah, I wouldn't say that necessarily one is better than the other. I mean, um, I think that they all have uh, benefits. Right. They, they, they can all work in their own way, just depending on how you use it. Yeah. Personally, I don't have a, uh, a favorite or anything like that. What is it like um, being a martial artist in real life? You know, going to your school every day, you've got your family that runs the school. And then uh, so you've got this experience behind you and then you go and you uh, go on the TV show where you're playing a character learning for the first time. How hard mm -hmm. is it? How hard is it to separate that mentality of pretending to be a beginner after all the experience that you grew up with? It was weird at first. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say that. Um, because, you know, you start doing all these very basic uh, forms and stuff um, when, like, you know, you can you have the ability to do a lot more. But um, over time, as the years have gone on, it's just become more natural. And also, um, I've been able to do uh, less basic stuff as I've gone along the show. So it's it's gotten, uh, yeah, it's gotten a lot more natural and easy for me. Yeah, you can tell you can tell from looking at season one to season five to the progression of the martial arts in the show, everyone seems to be stepping up their game. So what was uh, what is your training regimen like on, on set? Is I do understand that sometimes instructors come in, they guide the cast a little bit. Like how can you describe the experience from season one to season five in terms of the choreography and the training? Yeah, so we have a stunt team. Uh, amazing stunt team. Love them. Um they're very uh hands on with us. Uh and they yeah, they they're very great at training, especially the people that uh, come into the show not already knowing karate. They're really good at uh, teaching them. Like they'll they'll make them into like really great fighters out of nowhere. Um, but uh, yeah, usually uh, I don't I don't see them unless we have specific choreography that needs to be done. Um, 
But you know, when that happens, I mean, they're they're always right there with us, making sure we've got everything down that we need to know, and they're like running through it with us until we pretty much just, yeah, we got it down. Did you have any prior experience or familiarity with the Karate Kid before you started filming Cobra Kai? A bit, not much. I'm gonna be honest. I knew of it, and there's a chance I had seen the the first one like once ever, but I barely remembered it. Um, so I, I pretty much went into the whole thing blind. Which is interesting because that adds to the character because the character of Bert is going into the whole situation blind. Yeah, yeah. I hadn't thought of it that way. <laughs> so what's it like having your school actually? Because uh, uh, for those viewers who are not sure or aren't aware, um, your school is actually featured in the show. Is that correct? Yes, yes. Twice now. Where can we find them? Um, let's see. In the uh, last couple episodes of season one and the last couple episodes of season four um, in the All Valley sequences. And they actually go by the name All Star Karate. That's the name yes, of your school. They do. So they keep the name. Yes. So, what was it like being on set with your peers, your acting peers? But now you've got your actual school here. What was that? That um, I guess collision of worlds like for you on set? Yeah, it was. It was. It was pretty funny. I didn't. Uh, generally, when we were on set, we weren't too close to the other uh, schools, um, especially All Star. They were on like the other side of the room compared to me. So, uh, uh, it, it wasn't. It wasn't too strange because I didn't see them that often. But um, it was it was very funny. <laughs> well, personally, I've never had to fight anyone from that team, um, as far as I'm aware. Or, well, no one from my actual school. I might have had to fight someone that was supposed to be from All Star. Um, it wasn't something I ever thought too much about. But um, it's I just I yeah I I really uh, like that that that, that I was just able to uh, be an opportunity. It's it's very interesting that it happened at all. It's it's very nice getting to see my school up there, getting the representation I think it deserves. So Bert is often seen as the comic relief on the show. Yes. Um, what is something that you would like people to know about the character of Bert that might not necessarily come across? Like in your ba in your mind, in the back Bert's background, what is something that people or that you wish people would know about Bert? I don't think it's shown quite enough, but um, he I like to think that he he values his his friends over everything else more than the rivalry. Um, there was a good bit of time where he he got caught up in all this craziness and he wasn't really like thinking about it. He was just getting thrown from dojo to dojo. But when it comes down to it, he's 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 very loyal to specifically his friends, not not the dojo, not like the karate, but like his friends, the people that he knows. And uh, yeah, I, I'd really like to see that get explored a little bit more in the future so that people can see that. The one thing I like about the show, which I think kind of echoes what you were talking about earlier, is Cobra Kai. When, when the first movies came out, it was very, very clearly, you know, there's good karate, bad karate. That's kind of the dynamic they had. But right. as Cobra Kai went on, we start to see more of a dynamic evolving, especially with Samantha's character and a lot of Johnny branching off and Johnny Daniel, that we're starting to show that it's not just whose karate is the best, but the characters are starting to learn how to take mixtures of everything and cross train and how you can learn from over here. And it's not really necessarily about the art, but about the person and 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 the material you're learning and how you apply it so a lot like you're beginning in the fusion martial arts how do you think the message in cobra kai carries over into your life in terms of mixing influences together yeah i mean i i think it yeah it, it it's it's well explained like that that it um it comes down to yeah being able to find your own style um that that can carry into both karate and just general life um you can take from a little bit of everything honestly um uh, you know, you don't necessarily have to stay rooted in one place. Uh, you know, just st just staying very like where you are, just never moving. Um, but I think it's better to learn from your experiences around you and being able to evolve yourself and how you do things. It's a, a big thing about loyalty and knowing who to trust and, uh, you know, uh, forgiveness and uh, you shouldn't be holding too much onto grudges and stuff. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, just overall, the biggest thing is just, uh, yeah, just knowing who you are and being comfortable with yourself. Now, can you tell us anything about um, your rivalry with Nate in the show? How like, you guys start off at the beginning being like the mortal enemies. How does that relationship progress throughout the seasons? Because by the time you get to season five, you guys are a little bit more on the same page. Yeah, it's really, it was so much fun to be able to work with him. He is, he is awesome. He's, he's amazing. Um, yeah, obviously we start, we started off as just these bitter rivals from out of nowhere. There was never any build up to it. We were just like bitter en enemies. Uh, and I think that was that was a big appeal of it is the fact that like no one knows what the context is. We just hate each other. Um, and then, yeah, more recently in later seasons, we've we've grown to be uh, allies and then essentially inseparable best friends 
once again, no context as to why we just are. And I, I love that so much. It's one of those things where we just, we have no idea what's going on, but we just, depending on where we're at, we're just either going to be at each other's throats or completely inseparable. And I love it. Uh, what is Stingray like to work with? He's amazing. I, I, I love Paul Walter Hauser so much. He is, he is amazingly funny. He's so nice. He's, he's great to work with. And he's just, he's always like doing improv. So he's, he'll like switch up lines or add little things in, in scenes that like no one will ever see coming and he'll have everyone on the crew just dying of laughter every single time. And it's awesome. And I can't wait to work with him again in the future. Awesome. So when it comes to the cast, when someone like Ralph Macho is on the show, like in his generation, when he started like it, that movie, The Karate Kid, it started a big boom in martial arts and youth at, at that time. Um, does that influence carry over at all when he's on set do you do you feel that history with him and do you feel that cobra kai is kind of going down the same path of trying to inspire another generation of youth to join the martial arts and i yeah i think absolutely i've, I've seen it myself that this show has been inspiring so many people to try out karate and uh try to get into to the, uh into it themselves maybe taking their own stuff away and when i'm working with ralph um like the, especially early on i was uh it was an honor to even be in his presence right um because he's the Karate Kid. Nowadays, he's uh, it, it's a lot. It's a lot more chill. We we've gotten to know each other fairly well, um, so he's just kind of Ralph these days. But um, yeah, it's it's it is it is fun funny to uh, just think about how much influence he's had uh, just in general on on film because of how iconic this franchise is. So I have to ask out of curiosity. So you you grew up with your family running the school in the dojo. How did you make that transition into acting? Like, did you? It was acting something that you wanted to pursue or is that something you just kind of fell into like how did that come about i absolutely fell into it um i think i think maybe we knew somebody at the karate school who knew that there was some kind of karate show happening so we decided to be uh to sign up to be extras for because we were like you know we were on a karate school this would be a fun little thing to do um and then yeah i just i got hired for it and the the longer i spent on set the more i realized that, that was just what i wanted to keep doing for a while <laughs> And who knew what that that some karate show would end up turn out to be? Right, yeah. We heard rumors any... that it might be Karate Kid related, but we had no idea. So do you have any aspirations to continue acting past Cobra Kai? I, I really do. Um, I, I want to keep doing it for a long time. Uh, I have I have no intentions of stopping anytime soon. I, I love acting, not just on the show, but just in general. It's just so much fun and it's just it's just something that I just I love doing so so much and I just I want to keep doing it for as long as I possibly can well I'd just like to thank you for your time today I really yeah. appreciate you coming on the show um the show has been a wonderful experience I, I'm from the generation when Cry Kid came out and Cobra Kai has just kind of relit that fire for me and it's 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 really a very special experience to be able to revisit the world I grew up with but there's so much more color there's so much new material there's so many new characters that go forward with this new show and I thank you for being a part of it and I thank you for being on here and we really appreciate yeah. your work and we cannot wait to see what happens in season six yeah thank you so much for having me on this was amazing I, I had a really great time we'd like to thank Owen Morgan for taking time with us today and sharing his experience from the martial arts in real life and what it was like on the show. Now we look forward to seeing Bert again in the highly anticipated conclusion to Cobra Kai with the upcoming season six. It's always fascinating to talk to cast members who are lifelong martial artists. So if you'd like to hear more, I highly recommend our interviews with Daryl Vidal, fellow compoist and inventor of the crane kick and William Christopher Ford, Shoren Ryu sensei and Dennis from the Karate Kid part three. And please be sure to sweep subscribe. No mercy.